Hello everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, Illinois. I have a little kind of a tutorial for you today on the serger, a cover hem serger. We have had many customers come to me and say, you know, could you do another video on the uh, cover hem part of serging? That's the part that seems to scare everybody. And quite frankly, I think it's one of the easiest parts, but no matter what surgery you have, I'm doing this today on the Bernina 890 cover stitch and a regular serger. But if you have another brand, our Baby Locks, um, some of our Jukies, some of the techniques I'm going to show you today will be very much um, a part of what you can do for your cover hem. I, I want to give you a couple of little tips and I'm going to go fairly slow because I think this is really an important thing to have you understand how simple and easy a cover hem can be. Now, if you see the quilt behind me, I wanna mention that right away before I get started. I think it is just wonderful. It might be sold by now. The um, One of the videos, um, we're doing a couple of videos in a row here. Um, we're filming them actually, so that you can um, see, and I think we're gonna send this Kanta um, video before this one. So we put them on sale for only our video YouTube um, people. We didn't take them to the store. They're only through our website. And the one that is behind me is just stunning. I just, um, I had all I could do to hold on and not buy it myself. <laughs> so uh, that's what it is. It's all hand stitching. If you get a chance to see it up close. I love the jacket. I guess it's on this side over here. Um, it's got, and look at, it's got a little patch on it. This jacket, if it were to be um, sold, because it's a real antique one, is probably about $3,000. We will not sell that. So uh, again, watch that video because it'll tell you a little bit about it. So let's get back to what I'm really um, hoping will help you today. And that's a, just a little bit of a tutorial about cover hem. Now, what is a cover hem? If you look at this shirt, um, you can see, and I don't know if you can see that real close neck or not because the colors are pretty hard, but you'll see it when I do it on the machine. It's two rows of straight stitching on one side, and when you turn it over to the other, it's a zigzag between them and a little bit more of a zigzag because it has an upper and lower looper thread that gives you stretch so that it's not going to pull, especially on a stretchy fabric like this because this is a knit fabric. I also did an embroidery design on here and put the little... Um, the threads are still on there, the little crystals, because they have glue on the back, and then you can just take this wand. It's a wonderful way to embellish an embroidery design, and it just gives you a little bit of a, a fun technique with it. Um, this is one of the um, garments that I've done, and this happens to be one, they're, they're real fan, you know, popular right now, the wide palazzo pants with the, um, the full leg, and this one has a little um, dart in the middle or a little opening. So when I did this particular rolled hem, I mean uh, cover hem, you can see it's going all the way around, but I start at an edge. I don't start in the middle. Whereas the pant that I have also here is a um, pant that's in, uh, the, the one that I just showed you with the paisley has a, it's a woven fabric. So that's a little bit different from this one. And this actually is a pant that I did, and again, I'm hemming this. This is a knit fabric. Now, this is already closed up. You can see on the arm, like if I were doing my arm, which I did do on this one too. But the, um, the closed up means you're gonna start right in the middle of the seam. You're gonna go, or the middle of the hem. You're gonna go around. Don't start on your uh, seam line because it's heavier and it's a little bit harder to go through, so you want to either start before your seam line or after your seam line. And then you're going to go all the way around. And I'll show you a little technique. I've done this in other videos, and that's not what I really want to focus on today. I want to focus on step by step and how you actually do the cover hem. But there is a method for doing this. You will pull your threads to the back. I tie them, and I use fray check. Fray check is absolutely the best. Just put a couple of little dabs on it when you do the first. Then you come around and you go over the stitching line that you did the original one, go past it about an inch, and that way you're not worrying about any of the threads that you've already um, tied off. And then you're gonna pull those threads again to the back. 
you're going to tie them off and you're going to put a little dab of fray check and i guarantee you those seams will never come out so that's been done on both of these it's just again it's a little wide um, lounging pant that's kind of fun because it's a, a full full pant and you can kind of see it just gives it a really nice touch by putting the seam here and again I did something with the elastic but I'm not going to go into all of that so let's get started I would like you to see um, exactly what I'm doing at the machine the um, <clears throat> wonderful thing about this machine and some of our other machines it will do the same thing when you turn the machine off <clears throat> I'm going to do that for you I'm going to actually turn the machine off and Nick I know you can see the uh, screen here so you're ready to do a cover hem and you go, oh my gosh, I haven't hemmed this for a long time. I haven't done cover hems. I don't remember how. We'll just click on this little video and it'll tell you. And there's videos right in the machine that are even better. So I hope that at this point you can really start to see I'm going step by step by step because what happens, people freeze and they think, Oh my gosh, I've, I was doing cover, I was doing overlock seams, which are what these are, and I don't remember how to do that cover hem, and it's probably too hard and I'm not going to do it. I want you to see how easy it really is. So look what happens. I did an over edge. Now I'm going to turn the machine back on, and I want you to see what happens when the screen comes up. Of course, it says Bernina made to create, <laughs> but it's really kind of fun to see what... Um, what is there so you'll know exactly how this machine is working for you and this is true on any of the machines of course your light you see what happened here the last stitch that you were sewing on or we were sewing on this machine which happens to be a four thread overlock now I have a couple choices here to get to the cover hem first of all I can decide do I want to save that well I might want to save it see the little file corner if I hit that thread there's a little file folder there and if I want to save it, I'll hit the button. I don't want to save this particular one, so I'm just going to X out of it. When I X out of it, three menus come up for overlock, for cover, and for combos. Well, as you know, today's um, little video is about cover him. So I'm going to touch the cover him. I'm in what they call a guided mode. I'm not in the um, expert mode because I want to show you exactly how to do this. So I'm just going to slide this up and look for the, um, the three thread cover stitch narrows. There's two of them. Now what does that mean? For heaven's sakes, we've got an LC and a CC. And then on the, uh, the one below it says CC and RC. And if you look at them, they look alike, don't they? Well, one's moved over a little and one is in the center. So that gives you a little bit of a hint why they're different, okay? So if you, and believe me, I had to think about this myself a couple of times. LC, what does that mean? That means your left cover needle. Write that down if you can't remember it, <laughs> okay? CC means your center cover needle. And I'm gonna show you where those go in a minute. That's the one that I actually want to sew today. But there's also a three thread cover stitch narrow, but it's got CC, RC. So now you know what that means, right? The CC means center cover needle, and the RC means right cover needle. So I'm going to do the, the two. I want a little bit of um, leftover hem to show it. And that's why I usually use this little um, guide. A white one is very good when you're doing something like this on, um, on black because it's a little easier to see. And you can see I, I wanted that to be just about a quarter of an inch the hem. That's where the cover hem starts. So that particular um, needle is going to be the left cover needles and so that's what we're going to touch and then what comes up a wonderful little video on what you're going to do i happen to have my foot down or i mean up already but if you have it down it tells you they want you to put it up because we're going to do something here in the next couple steps then there's an arrow right here which you can see i'm going to touch that Oh, it says unthread the following thread parts. Now, I know this is something that everybody goes, oh my gosh, what is she doing? Clip, 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 and clip. I don't want those threads up there. I'm going to take them off. One of the wonderful things that are really great, I'm going to take this one out because I definitely don't need it. 
about this, and Nick, I don't know if you can even get this, but if you can hear it when I put this down, you hear this thread kind of click on this? This happens to be the Mettler um, overlock thread or serger thread, and I love it because it fits exactly, the opening of this little hole here fits exactly on the spool of the thread. And then you don't need one of these, um, let's see if I've got a spool holder here. Bernina makes a wonderful little tin. And you know, sometimes you need to have these little, um, I have another one here, these little um, holders to keep the thread from moving on your spindle. Well, look at that, how nice that is. And normally on another thread, you'd have to put that in there to make it, make it nice. But here it just fits right down nice and even. Okay, so maybe later after we're through, we'll be able to get you a picture of that that shows you exactly. It can use any thread on this, but I just love this because it fits so firmly. I'm going to take this one off because remember I said we're doing three thread. And I do have a little tip for you for these threads. I know I don't think I brought it with me, but, um, you know, they get caught. I have a clear plastic bin I throw all my threads in. And take that, um, that uh, clear tape that we have on and it, it's, it wraps around itself and it's so nice. It just keeps the thread nice and tight. You don't have to worry about the threads rolling all around and getting tangled. So uh, I've showed that in some of the other videos too. So now I've cut everything and if you don't know how to unthread it, um, I just cut it and watch what I'm going to do here down by the foot. I'm pulling them all out. That's why the thread, that's why they asked you to put the foot up. If the foot was down, what would happen? It wouldn't, it would be really hard to pull through the tension. And what would happen is these threads might get caught in some of the tensions. All right, let's go back to the next arrow. And it says, attach the presser foot. Well, I've already done that. It gives you a little video if you don't know how to do that. But this is a narrower foot than what we normally use. This is your regular presser foot, 011. I'm using a cover presser foot which is um, what they show there, C13. If you don't know how to put it on, the little video is right there. Then it says to adjust the presser foot pressure. And see how there's a number four there? This is the lever right up here for the pressure foot pressure. I usually leave it at four. When I got to this real silky fabric with the um, paisley that I showed you, I might reduce it a little bit. This is reducing. Now I'm gonna go back down to the default and this gives you more pressure. When you have something sliding through, sometimes you need a little less pressure. So it depends on your fabric. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna leave it at the default. Then I'm gonna to go to the next arrow, and now we've got the position of the needles. See what this says? LC, CC, RC. They're the needles up in front. There's two needles that are in the machine right now that are in the back, but what am I gonna do? Bernina has done such a wonderful job with their needles that I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put in two new needles because I really like to have, um, I don't know who's been working on these and I want to make sure that they're done right. You see this little tool right here? This is just a fabulous thing. I always have people asking me, how do you get it in? How does it come out? Well, look at this. Can you see it with my fingers there? See that little piece in the middle? That holds this in here. And one end is a threader. It's got a little um, knife in it. And the other end has got a hole in it for the needle. And that's what I'm gonna do, but oh my gosh, this is in the way. So what, look at what happened. You see what happened there? That's in the way. Okay, I just move it out of the way by pushing the needle to the left. Now I'm gonna bring this up here and I'm going, these little slots here, these little black slots, are where the needles are. I'm gonna just um, move it to the left. You can see it's nice and loose now. And by holding this piece in here, now I, I'm not sure if this is, needle has been used for a long time or not. Until I find out, I'm gonna leave it in my little um, slot for needles there. And then I'm gonna redo, then I'm gonna take out the other needle, which is your back, uh, they call it L and left, and right, and I'm going to take that out. Okay, I'm going to put that in my little thread spot, and then I'm going to take two new needles. You want to use Bernina needles. It's very important that you're using the right needles, 
And the other thing is when you're doing this, do you see how I'm putting the needle to the flat, the flat side right here to the back? All right, and I still have that foot out. And now I'm gonna put this in the left position of the needles and I have to reduce the, um, the little um, screwdriver. And I don't even have my glasses on, so it's really cool that I can see this so well. And you can feel it when it's in there nice and tight. Then I'm gonna take the second needle and these, um, I wanna take an 80. These have got mixture of 80 and 90s and I'm gonna do a medium weight fabric. So I really don't want to uh, do a 90 on this. And I'm gonna take this and put that needle package back right away before I forget it. Again, the flat side of the needle is to the back. And watch, I can take the center needle see this little screwdriver is just wonderful it goes in it's a set screwdriver and see how easy that was and I can put that back if I want to if I didn't know exactly what to do I can press that little camera and it will tell you exactly to take your tool and put it up there and your screwdriver and you know do all the little things that we showed and that's what's great about these um, cameras they will show you what you're doing now, before I get into anything else, I'm going to put this back in there and you can see how it just clicked in. You don't have to force anything. And let's go to the next set. And this says to deactivate the knife. The knife is what, and I'm going to take this one out too so you can see. This is your knife right here. I'm going to just go ahead. There's a lever on the right hand side that all you have to do is press and see how that went down. And that's what the um, little video will show you too. Then if I want to adjust the cutting width, they have this at uh, 5.0. I'm going to keep it at 5. Point. This, the um, default is 6. Well, let's put it on 5 the way they are showing it. And again, it, if you didn't know where that lever, where that was, that's right down here. You can see that little round. If I close this back up, you can see it a little bit easier. And you see how that I'm moving that with my thumb. And then let's go to the next set. At, attach the cover stitch insert. That's this piece that you've been seeing. This is for overlock because it doesn't want you to cut your fingers when you're doing it. I'm going to take that out and I'm going to put in the cover stitch, which is a flat piece. And you can see this flat piece is really nice because what it does is it holds that. Um, um, now, it, it isn't letting me go up there. I wonder why. I wonder what happened there. I've got it in but it won't let me close it and there's a reason that it won't. I think it's important for you to actually see this video so I'm going to touch this and the knob and this is confusing because there's two knobs down here and even myself I've done this where I've touched the wrong knob. It's the knob to the left. I'm going to turn that to the left and then I'm going to put my foot on the presser foot and do you see what happened? See how that upper looper went down? So you can see it again when you touch the presser foot. It's not this knob, the big one, it's the one to the left. Okay, so that's all done. Then we will go to the next screen, which is no setting of the upper looper is required. Why would that be? Oh, you're right, those of you that said it, because we're not using it. Okay, now the next one is set the rolled hem to zero. It's already on zero, but you can see if it was this way, we're pushing it to zero. The next setting now is to do the threading, which is going to be a very simple process. So we're going to take the, um, it's gonna show you the yellow and the green. And the great thing about this, you can do whatever one you want to first. It doesn't, you don't have to do one or the other, but to keep it in sequence for you, I think it'll be a little easier for you to see it. I'm putting that all the way down on that thread spool. Do you see the yellow up here? That's the thread yellow and down here is yellow. And then there's a little hook in the back that just kind of catches over. And then I just follow the thread path, which is yellow. Oops, don't want to get into green. And I again, I hold on to this on this side. Let me try it with this hand so you can see it a little bit better. A little more awkward to do, but you can see it better this way. Now, do you see how I'm going to go over the yellow only? I'm doing this with my... And then I'm going to follow the paths up to what number is this? You're right, left cover, LC. And then I'm gonna to go to the furthest little slot to the left. And then there's a tiny 
little slot right in there by the needle. Now we have another piece of, um, or another uh, reason to use this wonderful little tool that was down here. And what am I gonna do? Right, I'm gonna take that needle, that foot out because it's easier to thread. And I cross the uh, thread as I go through it. You see this little pointed um, diamond up here at the top? If you go across that, that's how you're going to get that to catch and go down the needle. And all I'm doing, trying to keep my hand out of here so you can see it, I go right down the needle and voila, it's threaded perfectly. I'm just I'm pulling that little hook into the back of the thread and it just pulls the thread right straight back. So it's very, very easy to use. That's what I wanted to show you. And again, I can cut the thread on the side and then I know that it's the exact right length of the tail. So let's get the second one, which is uh, the green, and I wanna make sure it's in there and it's going through the green part. Here's the green marking on the back of the machine. There's a little click there, you could hear that. And then I'm just gonna follow the thread path to the greens, to the green. I'm gonna go up here and go over to what one? CC, which is your center cover hem. I'm just gonna go to the next slot over and go ahead and touch that little, um, it in there and touch that little slot inside the thread and do the same exact thing. But take that little diamond, make it go across your needle. You're going to slide this piece down your needle thread and you see there's that little loop right there. I don't know if you can see it with my hand in the way. I mean, okay, good. Okay. And then um, I'm going to take that, that little hook. I could do my finger, but the hook is really nice to be able to see it there, I'm trying to do it so you guys can see it, but the um, little hook is just pulling it right out in the back. I'm going underneath the foot and then I'm gonna cut it on the thread cutter. So now I know I have the exact right length for the needle threads. And then I can put my foot back again. Oh, we have one more thread. So that's the purple thread. And if you look at where the purple thread is, I know, but I want you to see it. It's right up in front here. See, there's three spools across. And I'm gonna stop it right now. There's a little pause button on there because I'm gonna only go this far, seat it real good with that um, spool holder on the bottom, go across the purple. You're gonna do the same thing. It's all the way the last one. There's a little hook up at the top. You're gonna follow exactly what they're doing now. And then, they're gonna take this thread out and give you a little bit of a longer tail. Now watch what they do when I do the pause. Okay, let's do them. See how it's coming up? So you're gonna bring it up like that and then they're gonna hit the, the um, uh, foot control and you're going to be able to finish it. So let me show you again. I'm gonna take the thread, I'm gonna bring it down here and bring it up to about there. That's all I needed. I didn't need that great big extra thread piece just to about there. And now in order to get this, and this is the coolest thing about the whole entire thing for the machine. Can you see that? And part, I wanna show you the rest because part of this knob is before you do anything with this thread, you remember I told you there were two knobs there? The big one here, you're gonna to turn to the left and see what happened there? It closed up the tube. So let's finish it and see what else they have to say on it. See how they're bringing it up? Now you're going to turn, you're going to press your foot. You hear how that foot control is making noise? And whoop, I didn't have to touch it. And it went right through. The thread has come right out and we are all ready to do our overlocks, I mean our cover hem sewing. And see how nice it repeats it? It goes back again. I want you to watch it one more time. See, we turned this knob over here. We brought the thread up. You're going to put it above the, the uh, hole, the little purple hole. You're gonna touch your foot control. You don't have to touch them at the same time. Um, some of our other machines, I'm gonna turn that off now so you can see, but some of our other machines, you have to take that thread and hold the foot control and the thread at the same time. And it's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your stomach. You don't have to do that here. You just touch the foot control like this and then put your thread and it, it whips it right through. Okay, so let's go ahead and say we're ready. Now we wanna turn that knob back. 
and voila, we are ready to stitch. Everything is done and ready to go. It is in perfect shape. So let me take a piece of fabric and I'll sew a little seam for you. So I put a little piece of fabric under here. You're going to close your foot, of course, and I could do that with my knee lift lever, which I love, but I'm sitting at an odd angle here so you can see it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and sew. Now, if I go off the needle, you've seen how I do that before. You're gonna have your needles up in its right position. You take this wonderful, wonderful little tool and you bring it all out and then it pulls it literally to the back and that way you can cut your threads off very easily. But you can see this is a really, really nice stitch. There are other methods. Um, we have this little um, tool. It's called a little hooky. <laughs> see the little hook in it? And you can take threads and draw them back into the seam. And I've done another video on that. But the main thing that I wanted to show you is how simple it is to really get um, started. I always take my threads and cut them over the thread cutter because I know it's the right length. And if you are at the needle, I mean, if you're at the machine in a good position, you want to go ahead and do your, your seam. Now, I would then pull these to the back. You can find a little um, pin like this. And you can see when you, you find where the little uh, thread is, and you just pull it to the back. And when you get all three of those threads, the second one, and I can just pull the third one again, they're real easy to, to find. You pull them all three to the back, and then what you do is you just tie them. And I use when I'm tying this little um, white tool that comes in the case from Bernina. I just hook that um, thread out like this, bring it back, tie it off, maybe make a couple more, put a drop of fray, drop of fray check on it, and you're all set and ready to go with a beautiful cover hem. So again, um, I think this step-by-step -step does, I hope it helps you. I'm, I wanted to just show you what the screen looks like and see how simple it is. Some of the tools that I use, if those of you that have this big book of surging, I know we sell this to all of our brands. It doesn't matter whether you have a Bernina or not. And I'm gonna tell you, write this down on page 60 on the right hand side is the best tip. I did put it in one of my videos. I've actually done this for years and I'm glad they put it down the way we've always said it. And it is a tip on how to use this little tool or any tool to tie off your threads for a uh, cover hem. Again, you want your, I like the little bigger um, threads when I'm doing a knit to go up and then, then uh, pins but I found something new that I just love, and it is that little, um, I know we've had it in other videos too, but it's that little tiny, um, I guess it's on this camera here, little tiny clip that really is great. Thanks so much, guys. Um, you see my new coffee cup? <laughs> Go and have a cup of coffee, enjoy the video, play it over and over, and let me know if there's any little tips that you find while you're doing it, there's many other ways to do these things. Thanks everyone, have a great week.